Welcome to all of you worshiping with us on, online and those, all of those who is here in person. Please take a moment to fill out one of the blue cards that you can fi found in the pew or fill it, fill it out online during the attendance form by scanning the QR code. This is how we keep um, our membership list up up today and we would like we would love to drop you a quick no if you are visiting us for the first time interest in giving the trinity electronically scan the qr code in the bulletin or test the 407-809-1560 to get started if you need a prayer an elder will be available in the front of the right of the sanctuary after the service and to pray with you. The next FTA TYM gathering is, is a pool party and fishing event on Sunday, July 14 at 3 p.m. Please contact the church office for additional detail. We hope to see you there. Now, uh, through August 11, it is our Peace Share fundraiser where peace come for dog collect donation for all cre creatures, pet groomings. Donation will include dog and cat food, treats and toys, etc., or donations. Contact Paul Suits with any question. Family Phone 9, return on Friday, August 16. At 6.30, it will be a special celebration welcoming me, Pastor Eduardo, and welcoming back Pastor Doug. Uh, we hope to see you there. And Touch a Truck is returning on February 1st, 2025. It is time to begin planning, and the first planning meeting will be held on August 15th at 5.30. We need volunteers and would love to have you as part of the team. Questions, please contact Terry Bog. Additional details are in the weekly meeting, in the weekly notice. Pastor, you have something you want to share? God is good, and he's been a, a God who's been a God of protection and grace to us as a nation. And I would just like to say that in your prayers, I'm sure that you've thanked God for that as well. And um, I think that also as we look at our worship and our service today, are we ready for uh, the, uh, the stand and greet them one another? Before that, okay. I want to share one more thing. Yes, please. July 28th. Uh, okay. Esperanza Viva will be here worshiping at 10 o'clock in the fellowship hall. We're going to have our first service in Spanish at starting at 10 o'clock over the fellowship hall. And <laughs> what can I? Yeah, go ahead. On August, August 25th, uh, we are planning to have the installation for Pastor Eduardo Martinez. Do you know who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> no sabe. He said no sabe. He said doesn't know. <laughs> Joan, he said no sabe. <laughs> uh, right. So let's now greet, extend, and greet each other, one another, and sharing the peace of God be with us. God's peace. God, God peace, my brother. God peace.
you're scratching his back, he kind of gets back and wants it, you know? He scratches back. the path on, on knowing the scooter also lost. <laughs> Let's start with the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please may be seated. If we say we have not seen, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all our righteousness. Let us then confess our sin to God our Father, most merciful God, we confess that we sin. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by uh, what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us 
so that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of the holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a calling on them, an ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and from our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory be to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. O oh Lord, you grant your thanks to this with your sense and shape of the dead, and courage to proclaim repentance. Give us a pure heart and mind for the Father and suffering and faithfully, even this own suffering and death. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Who was in peace and one spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please may be seated. The Old Testament reading for today comes from the book of Amos, chapter 7. This is what the Lord showed me. Behold, the Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line with the plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people, Israel. I will never again pass by them. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then I'm Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to Jeroboam, king of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the midst of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from the land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, and eat bread there, and prophesy there but never again prophesy at Bethel, for if it is the king's sanctuary and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered and said to Amaziah, I was no prophet nor a prophet's son, but I was a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore figs. 
But the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from the letter to Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purposes of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance having been predestined according to the purposes of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who are the first to hope in Christ might be, the, might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. King Herod, Herod of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some say, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why this miraculous power are at work in him. But others say, he is Elijah. And others say, he is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For it was Herod who had sent and seized John and bound him in a prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, It is no lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and want, wanted to put him to death. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man and kept him safe. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet to all the nobles and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. For when Herodias' daughter came, uh, came in the dance, and she, she, placed, she pleased Herod and his guest. And, they, and the king said to their girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he bowed to her. Whatever you ask me, I will give it to you up to half of my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, For what should I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came in immediately with haste, to the king and act to the king and asked, saying, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry 
but because of his oath and his guest, he did not want to break his word to her. And immediately the king sent an executioner with order to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison and broke his head on a platter and gave it, gave it to the girl. And the girl gave it to her mother. When, she, when his disciples heard of it, they came and took his body and laid, on, laid, in, laid it on a tomb, in a tomb. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be richly and abundantly poured out upon you this holy day. Well, you know, I just uh, would like to say that uh, come tomorrow, about an hour from earlier, I hope to be out of this cast. And hopefully hearing the news that my bone has fused together and that the bones are ready now to walk, or to go in a walking cast, which is an air boot. And that'll take a little time, but we're getting gradually to that point where we're gonna be able to start putting some weight on it. So um, I thank you for your prayers, and uh, still we're pain free. <laughs> so thanks be to God, amen. I would like to say today, we're gonna be looking at the epistle lesson, first, uh, excuse me, Ephesians chapter one. And it goes verses 3 to 14, but we got to tag it to John the Baptist. And you remember John the Baptist. He was the forerunner of Jesus, who was the one who was to go and prepare the way of the Lord. And it was he who was baptizing people out into the wilderness, and he was uh, dressed in camel's fur and uh, ate wild locust and honey. I'm, I'm really not looking forward to that for lunch, but uh, I just would like to say, you know, that's what was going on. And he was a very public and popular man that was getting a lot of people to hear. And he was preaching the gospel of repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
And there were all kinds of people going out, and they'd never heard a message of them being able to, to repent. They thought that they were poor and miserable sinners and just were poor and miserable about it. And as a result, people who were the un untouchables were coming out and asking John for a baptism of repentance and forgiveness. And he baptized them. And he gave them that wonderful good news of forgiveness. I find that as you and I start to look at this, we start to see that we start to think in our own life about the need of forgiveness, something to make life right. And we follow, find uh, uh, in the Old Testament lesson, you know what a plumb line is? I bet all you know what a plumb line is. It'll keep your wall straight, won't it, if you're building it with a wall. Now, otherwise you're like me, you're building a lean-to. And uh, what I'd just like to say is that <clears throat> that plumb line is something that you have to have if things are really going to line up correctly. Now, my dad was a surveyor, and he claims that he could uh, uh, be able to measure a road a quarter mile away, and from that quarter mile away, he could line up the bolts on a bridge and where they were going to meet one another, one end of the bridge to the other. And I, I saw his work, and it was fantastic. But that's exacting work. And when we start to think about our life and being judged by a one who made us holy and ask us to be holy even as he, the Lord our God, is holy, we realize that our plumb line's out of whack. We realize our life is not lining up with God's. And we understand that we too need to repent for the forgiveness of our sins and really realize the kingdom of heaven is at hand, but are we ready for it? All of us will one day die. One day. A lot of people feel badly, however, during this life, right now, about the things they've done or said. They've lived a life of regrets. Sometimes even for years we heard about that in a few of our Bible study examples today. And when we start to think about that, they, they feel shame and secrecy and maybe have told no one and maybe told everyone. They wonder if God will accept them or deny them. After one of our services this weekend, I was uh, confronted by someone that says, it says when I die I've got to be judged. And I don't know if I'll be good enough. And I said, I know, it's a little, uh, little concerning, isn't it, when you're laying there in a casket and there's nothing else you can do. And you're thinking God's going to look at you and ask you, are you good enough? And you may feel as though you're just not measuring up. Your plumb line's out of whack. I have very good news for you. I have a friend that has OCD. He will tell you all the time that his plumb line just doesn't line up. There's a lot of us that way, that we realize that we've fallen short of God's glory. And in the midst of sickness and suffering, we wonder if we can be like John the Baptist, who would say and realize that our life is really in the hands of the Lord and that we have one purpose, of living our life in repentance for the forgiveness of sins, but to be ready for the kingdom of heaven. And we realize that we've fallen short. But the good news is this. Despite the situation that you're in, the suffering or sickness that you're surrounded by, the Bible tells us nothing in this life or world that will come. Nothing. Nothing. N-O-T-H-I-N-G. Yes, you heard me right. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Here's where this text begins. Verse 3 of Ephesians 1. Follow along with me if you'd like. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. He didn't leave any blessing out. All of them that are on the list, he put in our box. And he gave us every spiritual blessing 
in the heavenly places. And we know that earthly things sometimes fade away and just get dimmer and dimmer. But in the heavenly places, that is awaiting us. God has guaranteed for us. And I want you to hear that and to know that. Every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, God was not stingy in doing this. He didn't go by the cheap. He gave us, you and me, every, every spiritual blessing. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. I remember being the youngest boy in my neighborhood, and I remember when I was chosen to be on the baseball team. I thought, oh, that was my glorious day, but I was chosen. They wanted me. Think of it, God, Almighty God, chose you before the foundation of the world. Even before anyone saw your cute little baby pictures, Ulysses, God chose you. You weren't here before the beginning of the world, but you heard about it, right? And so if we. God chose you way back there, way back then, to be his. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world, before the first star in the sky was hung, before the first mountains were <coughs> formed or the waters were placed in the oceans before the foundation of the world he'd already chosen you I don't know about you but doesn't that just kind of give you a one big warm fuzzy God is wrapping his arms of grace and mercy around you having you hear what's in his plan for you <coughs> He chose us to be something that we are not. Now, each and every one of us know that we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And if you don't believe it, just look to the person to your right or your left and ask them. They'll probably tell you, okay? Each of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But God made us to be something that we are not. What do you mean by that, Pastor? He made us to be holy, without sin, and to be blameless, declared by God, something which we were not. He has declared us to be. He lines up the plumb line. He straightens out the things that are bent out of shape. He straightens up all the things that have gone wrong in our life, and he straightens it up and declares you and me to be holy and blameless. This is God's doing, my friends. In love, he predestined you. He, pre he predetermined you to be adopted unto himself as God's child. There are so many people in this world that don't feel like they belong, that they just don't feel like they can find their place. And so they're the unlovable, the unforgiven, the untouchables, the, the, uh, the forgotten ones. Looking to you straight in the eye. God has chosen you. God has predestined you. And now you hear that God has adopted you to be in his heavenly family. What a beautiful promise that is. God decided according to the purpose of his will. God decided. God decided to do all of this in your life and in my life before the beginning of time, to be holy and blameless even before the throne of God Almighty who knows all, who sees all, and is holy. He sees you as being without spot or stain, without wrinkle, without fault, without blemish, without the stain or the smell of sin. Your soul, your spirit, your body, your life, you are a forgiven child of God. 
according to the purpose of his will and the praise of his glorious grace that he's blessed us with in Jesus. You see, all of this comes to us because of our connection to Jesus, who says to us elsewhere, I am the vine, you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. In essence, he says, you are nothing. But through him, you have life, and you have abundant life, and you are a child of God, adopted by his grace and mercy. And then he tells us, For my friends that are out there feeling as though they have sinned and fallen short and just could never see the forgiveness of any of their sins going away, I want you to hear what God's word here says. Verse 7, Ephesians 3, verse 7, or Ephesians 1, verse 7, excuse me. In him, in Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins, our trespasses, according to the riches of His grace. You see, that's what the Calvary's cross was all about. That's why Jesus had to come, to be holy in our place, to be able to pay the price and the penalty of all of our sins, and for us to receive that forgiveness through the blood of His cross. And then he says in verse 8, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us. All of this forgiveness, all of this redemption. How many of you like mashed potatoes? If you're on a diet, don't raise your hand. Okay, okay, I got you. I like mashed potatoes, but I also like gravy on top of that. Do you like gravy? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, do you ever have the ladle? You know where you just dip it in and pull. And then you say, one more please. And you just ladled it on. Thank you, Brendan. God lavished his grace on you in redemption, the forgiveness of your sins. Just ladles it on. Not skimpy, not scrape, but just really layers it on. If you're going for an ice cream cone, you, this is more than the two scoop, okay? God has given us a lavished love in all wisdom and insight. <coughs> for so many people, they're swarmed by a mountain of sin. A mountain of sin that stinks, that has a stench to it, a smell that fills their nostrils and invades even their minds. They can't forget it. Listen and learn that God has lavished his forgiveness upon you. He ladles it up. Elsewhere in Scripture we read that though our sins be many, the blood of Christ cleanses us of all sins. And again, he takes our sins and he separates them from, as far from us as the east is from the west. And again... He cast our sins into the depths of the sea to be no more. And elsewhere still, he says, I will remember their sins no more. All those things that are bothering you so, that you've been unable to forgive yourself of, all of those things that are just bothering you so, like yesterday's garbage, you smell it, and it's getting worse. You hear what God said? He says, I will take those sins. And an all-knowing God makes this promise to you, and I will remember those sins no more. God has truly moved heaven and earth to give us this hope. You know, a lot of people wonder, well, what, what's God really going to say? You know, when, when, when we get to, when we die and when judgment day comes, what's, what's God going to say to me? Does that ever make you think about that day? What's God going to say? Read in this text, Ephesians 1, 
Verse, this is now verse 9, 10. Isn't it wonderful that God has made known to us the mystery of his will? According to his purpose, set forth in Christ, which is now here with us in the fullness of time. To the cancer patient, who's just been told there's nothing else that the doctors can do. To the one who sees the runway of their life starting to come less and less with more, any more pavement. And they realize the end is near. Isn't it wonderful to those of us who have been bothered by something that's never been taken away, that we've been unable to forgive ourselves of? Isn't it wonderful for us to hear and now today know at 12 o'clock noon almost, the mystery of God's will. You are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly realms. God has loved you and chosen you to be holy without fault by what Jesus did for you on the cross. And God has adopted you and chosen you to be in his family. And he's given you something else. He says, this gives me, God speaking there, great pleasure. So we give God praise for his glorious grace, which he's poured out upon you. Yes, he's so rich in his kindness that he even purchased in your freedom with the blood of his own son as he forgave you your sins. In him you have obtained an inheritance. That's God's will and testament to you. He predestined you according to the purpose of him who works all things. And so now, as you hope in Christ, I want you to also hear the gospel of your salvation and the certainty of it, that he has given you the Holy Spirit to believe and trust in this Jesus, who is the guarantee that has sealed you unto salvation in Christ with a heavenly inheritance until that day when he opens the book and he sees that your name, yes, is written in the book of life, just as he promised. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Let us boldly proclaim our faith using the word of the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, making of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, lying was buried. He descended into hell, and the dead was not again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and see at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, who is living to come, the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of the servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he, he has freed us from eternal death and give us life everlasting. Therefore, we angel and archangel and we all the company in heaven will out and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing. <laughs> Lord, the congregation lifts up the following prayers to you. First prayer card I have here. Pray for Darty Allman for congratulations on retirement after 44 years of Orlando Hell. Pray for the Cooper twins for their second birthday. For Carson today and Griffin tomorrow. Pray for Frank and John, or sorry, Crow, John Krause. Uh, for continued healing and comfort. Um, forgive me, I'm going to have to use my cell phone, which I'm not normally supposed to do, but the printing is small and my eyes are bad, but I want to make sure I'm reading this correctly. Pray for continued healing and rehabilitation following John's stroke and healing for Frank's ailments. Praise and thanksgiving for God's intervention and love for the Krauss family. I have a prayer card here that has three separate items to it. So bear with me and listen to this. Somebody who has a 90-year-old grandmother who is in the hospital again has apparently strained family relations. And this person apparently also has a financial struggle in the hospital, which I can understand. But they feel that they're not worthy of healing and God's love, so let's all pray that this person does indeed feel God's love because God does not condemn somebody for not being able to handle things like that. I have two prayer cards here on the same topic, so I'll read take them together and summarize them. Uh, pray for President Trump, for Secret Service, for the citizens of this country, and the person killed and two that were critically injured. Thank the Secret Service for the prompt response in the assassination attempt. May Trump heal quickly. And also, we may not let it in our hearts to think and consider such evil as this person has done by ourselves, that we grant this mercy on all. And the last part of the card here, uh, Tom White is in the hospital. We pray that he does well and that your healing hand is upon him and that he returns to health and to service here quickly. Lord, in your mercy. Who have given joy and gladness to hold to the whole world with the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for his victory over the grave and the death and the immortality and life that he has made known to us. And we be seeking you just as we have been buried with him in the death by our baptism. So we may also rise with him to new life. Lord Jesus, by your word and your Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in pain or need, illness or adversity. And we pray for the he for health 
fast recovery, good medical result and treatment, as well as any other situation that our brothers and sisters in Christ and family and extension family and our neighbors are going through. We especially mention our pastor Callison, Ulexis Floyd, Sharon Tyson, David Green, Diane, Larry Coons, Catherine Simmons, and Brad Smith. And we also add those that we hold in our mind, in our, ma in our heart, in this moment of silence. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our brothers in Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ, we read from the scripture that on the night our Lord was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciple and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink of it. All of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. As long as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Come, Lord Jesus. Please may be seated.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. We give you thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through these salutary gifts. And we implore you that your mercy, you will strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and a fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace and serve the Lord with joy.